Some people believe that when you die, your soul transcends this world to live for the rest of eternity in a place of light, of warmth, of friends and family, of the loving embrace, of purpose fulfilled, of meaning, of peace and love. I believe that for the last 70 years, heaven has been a place on earth. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Toys R Us. Charles Lazarus was born in Washington, D.C. in 1923. He grew up working in his father's bicycle shop on the first floor of the building where they lived. As a kid, he dreamed of ways that he could help expand the business and maybe have a business of his own someday. He saw his future during World War II as he would listen to his fellow soldiers dream about returning home, getting married, and raising a family. The future was children. Lots of them. In 1948, after World War II ended, he took $5,000, rented out his father's old bicycle shop, and opened his own business called Children's Bargain Town, also sometimes called Children's Supermart, sometimes called Children's Bargain Town USA. They did well, opened up multiple locations with incredibly long and generic names. They were a baby furniture retailer at the best time in history to be in the baby furniture business. Babies everywhere. People didn't just want furniture, they started asking for toys. Charles recognized that the customers didn't buy multiple cribs or dressers. Those items were reused by each successive child born to the family. But what they did come back for time and time again were toys. New toys, different toys, toys that changed with the seasons, with the culture, with the advancements in technology. Charles went all in on toys, positioning the business as the number one, the largest toy seller with prices that no one could compete with, in some cases making only pennies per sale. When you thought of toys, Charles wanted you to think of his stores to associate that purchase with his business. Don't just go anywhere for toys. Go to the best toy store, the biggest toy store. We only sell toys. We are just toys. We are toys. Toys are us. Children's Bargain Town for Huppy Boys or Girls 20 Inch Dragster. Bargain Town's low everyday price, $28.87. Toys are us. Bargain Town, Bargain Town, Bargain Town. The tagline, Toys Are Us was used all over their printed marketing materials and even their signage. In 1957, as self-service supermarkets where you pushed your own cart and selected your own goods directly off the shelf became popular, a new store was opened using the self-service concept, allowing him to stock more merch and have an even greater selection. This new design shop was the first to be called Toys R Us with the tagline superseding the original name of the business, which became the new tagline, Toys R Us, the children's bargain town. A new Toys R Us logo was designed with a backwards letter R to make it feel like it was written by a child. In 1960, the children's Bargain Town slash Toys R Us mascot of Dr. G. Raff was given a complete marketing makeover to become the more familiar Jeffrey Giraffe. Giraffes, of course, nature's most playful animals. Known for their exotic, non-threatening appearance, their friendly demeanor, and the breadth of their superficial pop culture trivia knowledge. In 1966, Charles sold Toys R Us to interstate department stores for $7.5 million to finance expansion across the rest of the country. Interstate department stores own several other comparably sized department store chains, things you've never heard of, things that are long gone. Even after the sale to interstate, Charles Lazarus continued to manage Toys R Us as a company under the interstate umbrella. And just eight years later in 1974, interstate department stores filed for bankruptcy. Lazarus himself took over management of all the interstate stores and by 1978 was able to steer interstate out of bankruptcy with a lot of careful business decisions and investments in people, products, and technology. Newly solvent, Lazarus converted the entirety of interstate into a singular Toys R Us corporation and went public trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol T-O-Y. <laughs> In 1983, Toys R Us opened a new chain of stores called Kids R Us, focusing more on clothing and home goods. In 1984, Toys R Us opened its first international store in Canada. Over the next decade, driven by the toy boom of the 80s, they would grow to nearly a thousand locations inside the United States and nearly a thousand more outside the United States. In 1994, after 46 years with Charles Lazarus piloting the ship, Michael Goldstein took over as CEO, and that's when the magic started to fade. 
Hard to blame any one particular thing or person for why a business, an $11 billion business, would begin to decline. Times change, tastes change, the 90s saw the introduction of new children's television broadcast rules that prevented the kind of freewheeling, direct-to-children toy marketing that the golden age of the 80s had experienced, where every single show, every single minute of television was a commercial produced explicitly to sell toys. Expensive video game systems had taken over a lot of time, interest, and spending dollars that used to be used for much cheaper to produce higher margin toys. History would show that Toys R Us was slow to change to those changing times. Stuck in the old discount superstore ways of doing business, with a board that failed to recognize the potential profits of emerging technology and products as fast as their competitors did. Even with flat growth and a drop in net income, in 1996, Babies R Us was added to their profile, hearkening back to the original reason Charles Lazarus got into the retail scene. After four years of losing market share and lagging stock price, Goldstein resigned and was replaced by Robert Nakasone. ToysRUs.com was established and then, I don't know, I guess that's all they thought they had to do with it. We bought the name, now where do we pick up our internet money? Nakasone would attempt to pull Toys R Us into the present by cutting their massive inventory by $500 million. Unfortunately, this meant that their suppliers, Mattel, Hasbro, and lots of others, would be stuck with the product they expected Toys R Us to purchase, forcing them to post decreased sales and in some cases losses as well in their own financial statements that year. And right around Christmas, when they should have been taking advantage of one of the first online holiday shopping seasons ever, ToysRUs.com crashed and was only intermittently available for the rest of the year, for the rest of the millennium, and into the future. In 1999, Walmart overtook Toys R Us as the leader in toy sales market share, where once Toys R Us was the undisputed champion of all things toy, Walmart was beating them with even lower prices and shoppers who were able to combine their purchases with all of Walmart's other offerings, not to mention the damage that online sales in general were doing to Toys R Us foot traffic. Also in 1999, after CEO Nakasone had spent considerable time, energy, and resources on an overhaul of the entire company's store design, customer service strategy, vision, and online sales capacity, he was unceremoniously fired due to disagreements with the board of directors, which was made up of founder Charles Lazarus and a lot of his old partners. In 2000, John Eiler, formerly of FAO Schwartz, was installed by the board of directors as the new president. Toys R Us signed a partnership deal with Amazon.com and even opened a store and held an IPO in Japan. In 2001, they opened the landmark Times Square location. And in 2005, Bain Capital Partners LLC featuring Mitt Romney, Kohlberg Kravis Roberts, and the Vornado Trust completed a leveraged buyout of the entire company. Toys R Us was once again a private company. What's a leveraged buyout? I'll try my best to explain, but I will admit up front that I copied my notes off of someone else's notes, and those notes were hard to read looking over his shoulder on the bus. See, you have a large, very valuable collection of toys. You save your money, you pay with cash, you don't have any credit card debt. I have some money, but not nearly enough to buy your whole collection, but I really want to. I mean, I don't really like toys, but I do like money and want to make more money. And since you don't want to sell your collection and give me that money, I'm going to buy it from you with someone else's money and then sell it for you for me. This guy I know who has a bank said I'm good to go because part of selling your collection is going to be paying them back for the loan they're providing me with to buy your collection. Your collection, of course, is the capital to secure my loan. Once I have your collection, I'll take out some more loans and lines of credit against those assets. I'll cash out as much of the equity into my bank account as I can, reduce payroll, turn over leases, slash operating costs, and then, uh, I don't know, maybe go on vacation. I deserve it after all that. It's a win-win scenario for everyone who is me. I can't lose. 2006 sees another new CEO and president, separation from Amazon, and the re-establishment of ToysRUs.com just in time for the 1999 shopping season. In 2009, Toys R Us acquires eToys.com, Toys.com, KB Toys, and KBToys.com, FAO Schwartz. They introduce smaller mall and shopping center-based operations called Toys R Us Express. 2012 sees expansion into China, which probably cost a lot of borrowed money. 2013, new chairman and CEO. 2015, new chairman and CEO. Pretty obvious where all of this is heading. In 2016, preparations were being made for a big, busy holiday season and then an IPO on the tail end of that to finally return to a publicly held company to release Bain and all the other investment partners from an investment scheme that had gone on for 10 years longer than they had wanted it to. 
But having played catch up for two decades into the new millennium, Toys R Us instead filed for bankruptcy protection in the US and Canada in an attempt to renegotiate the nearly $5 billion in loan debt burden that had been placed upon them during and since the buyout. Money that could have been spent on inventory or infrastructure, on technology, and on investments in people. Toys R Us was caught in a cycle of decreasing profits due to a continually changing marketplace without the ability to adapt to or invest in new technologies or new products because every nickel they earned was being used to pay off the debts they incurred when they were forced by an outside entity to purchase themselves. In September of 2017, they announced that 400 stores, both Babies R Us and Toys R Us, would be closed immediately while the rest of the company attempted to regain its standing. But once bankruptcy is declared, it's hard to throttle down the inevitable turn toward the finish line that no one wants to cross. Toys R Us at its peak was the kind of place that a toy collector could only conceive of in their wildest dreams. It was the kind of place that even now in photographs seems unbelievable. Shelves that are too high to see the top of, product that goes on forever, everything is in stock all the time at prices that literally could not be beat. Stuff you liked, stuff you wanted, stuff you knew you'd never get, stuff you'd never seen before and didn't even know existed. It was a place you looked forward to, a place you saved your money for, a place where someone like me would have been happy to spend the rest of eternity in. From bikes to trains to video games, it's the biggest toy store there ever was. And you know, I didn't want to grow up, but since I did, I'm glad I was a Toys R Us kid. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends and family and everyone who ever shopped at Toys R Us. If you're in the position to help the channel grow to keep cranking out videos every week, please head over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash toygalaxy, and let us know in the comments below what your best Toys R Us memory is. For me, it was that time I went there and bought that action figure every time, hundreds of times over the last 40 years. Walmart, Target, Walgreens, Amazon, it's not the same, and it never will be.